Hi, everyone. I am delighted on this episode of Words, Images, and Worlds to be talking with writer, editor, creator, designer, um, a person who does even more than I knew about, and that is Phil Smith. Phil, thank you for jumping in and joining and talking with me for a few minutes and live long and prosper. Absolutely. Like I was saying before, uh, thank you for having me on, Jason. I am shocked that I made the cut. <laughs> You you are definitely in the cut. You are definitely in the cut. You've worked with folks like um, Ron Mars, J. Michael Straczynski, uh, David Hine. I mean, uh, you are n- nice and firmly rooted in this industry. So uh, glad to be talking with you about your origins and some of the work that you've done. Oh, of course. And of course, Mark Silvestri, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Jim, recently Jim Starlin, which was a great thrill. Yeah. Of- you know, the creator of Thanos, Infinity Gauntlet, Dreadstar, just, and he, what's nice, he's a nice guy. He which really is, just is. Icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah. You, you, the, some of that Thanos sort of energy doesn't come through. He is a very nice man. I met him in person at a convention once and was just struck by how kind he was. And yeah, I'll take the picture, do the thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so so curious about how you decided that comics were the space or one of the spaces that you wanted to create and work in. Oh, well, uh, after the Navy, so I've had a couple jobs, and it's going to sound like I'm lying about the jobs I've had, but I actually <laughs> had these jobs. Sounds so when I, when I was in the Navy, I was an avionics technician working on uh, avionics for the E2C Hawkeye, which is the Navy's version of the Air Force AWAC. It's got the big radome on top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was in the Navy from 96 to 2000. I get out hoping to become a firefighter. Took the LA firefighter exam, thinking that my military experience would get me higher on the list or add points to my test. It did not. Uh-huh. So I had to re- readjust my whole life plan. So I went to work at Raytheon, went to school at night at CSUN, studying graphic design and illustration. Mm -hmm. I self-published a comic book with an artist who's now known as J.K. Woodward. He does Mm -hmm. a lot of painted Mm -hmm. work for IDW, Star Trek. He does the Star Trek cruises. I just saw a bit of a podcast he did the other day. He was living in Germany. Uh, I've found him on the internet in Uh 2001-ish, and we put together three issues of a comic. He moved back from uh, Germany to Boston to LA. First time I met him, I handed him a copy of the book we worked on. I was teaching karate at CSUN, and one of my students says, hey, uh, uh, what do you do in your spare time? I go, well, I'm trying to self-publish a comic. And she said, Let me introduce you to my editor. It turns Uh out she was a writer, Uh had a book at Top Cow, at Top Cow, Uh and she walked me into Top Cow because I had questions about the technical side of it because Jim, J.K. Woodward, had put it all together in Quark, which is Uh a page layout program Uh that was the precursor. It's still around, but the precursor to what everybody, almost everybody uses nowadays, which is InDesign. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So how I got started, I self-published through a pure stroke of luck, met somebody who worked, was a r- freelance writer for Top Gal. From that, handed the book to editor Renee Gearlings. Renee looked at it and God, God bless her. Uh, she said, you know what? This is not good, but you put <laughs> a book together. Well, not the art. The art was great, uh-huh. but my writing was not what it should be. She said, but you know what? You put a book together. That is editorial. Why don't you become an editorial intern? Uh-huh. So I interned at Top Cow for three years, unpaid, uh, while getting my graphic design degree at night. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, and then I started bartending to make ends meet. So I was kind of juggling GI Bill benefits, college, bartending, sleeping in my car, doing catering gigs, while supporting an unpaid internship at Top Cow. Wow. Wow. Worked there for 10 years, eventually got paid, started as a trade paperback designer. So I started putting the trades together, Uh then trade paperback editor, then got to start to talk to the creators. Uh 
Uh, then just through pure attrition, worked my way up to where when I was amicably laid off in 2012, amicably, uh -huh. uh, my title was managing editor. Yeah. But I wasn't really mad. I was managing makes it sound like there's a plan. It's you're falling out of a tree and trying not to die when you hit the ground <laughs> every day. <laughs> you know? So um, then I freelanced. But like I said, it was amicable. The, what happened was there was a point where uh, they were trying to consolidate all of Image's titles and look and production in one place. Mm -hmm. And so my job in the Top Cow office was no longer necessary. And they're like, and they they were like, hey Phil, this is business. I'm like, yeah, I get it. It's all good. I'll I'll still drink with you. I'll still hang it. You mm -hmm. don't lose my number. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then I started freelancing. And some of the creators who I worked with at Top Cow were like, hey Phil, we don't want to let you hang out to dry. Of whom Ron Mars was a big one. He was super helpful. Always had me in mind for a job, and did a lot of stuff with him. Mm -hmm. And Editor Renee Gearlings found out I was freelance and she said, hey, wait a minute. J. Michael Straczynski hit me up looking for a production person. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. I did four series and a one shot and some other stuff with JMS who his scripts are so pristine. <laughs> it's like a dream. Yeah. When they come back from the letterer, the only thing, the only thing is like, oh, I missed a comma. Damn it. <laughs> and that's it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So did four books there. And then just in that span, I picked up clients along the way, like Black Mask. I do some work <laughs> for them. Rocket Ship Entertainment, uh, led by Tom Akel, who Tom Akel is a freaking killer. He <laughs> is so on it, so smart. Brandon Freeberg, with whom he works. Jimmy Diakino, who does design and books that like everyone over there is a killer. Yeah. Uh, and also nothing but good things to say about the head of Black Mask, Matt Pizzolo. Uh, other freelance jobs. Oh, through Ron, uh, the relaunch of Dreadstar from Jim Starlin. Uh, he's releasing it now as OGNs. So each book is like five issues at a time it's an ogn so like it's longer format type thing mm -hmm. uh, still doing a little bit there but through all of this i also wanted to self-publish again so i have my own little label called fighting lion comics and i publish my own private little story called brick jones attorney for earth the story of a selfish attorney who through a strange twist of fate has to represent the earth in interstellar court so the joke uh -huh. is, he's saving us from the alien invasion, one case at a time. <laughs> nice, nice. So I've got five issues of that in the can, uh, but it's self-publishing. I release it when I can. I, I release like one issue a year at LA Comic Con. And mm -hmm. I go to LA Comic Con, it's more a social thing. You know, just to say, yeah, I put out a new book. Well, Phil, you're not making any money. Here's the thing. As a freelancer... Me just being there, people come up to me and say, old friends, and say, hey, Phil, you're still in the mix? You see this booth, don't you? <laughs> and they're like, oh, can you do my Kickstarter for me? Hey, Phil, can you do my OGN? So, for example, uh, former Top Cow artist uh, Tyler Kirkham does uh, Kickstarters all the time. Sometimes he asks for a little help. Mm -hmm. I did a logo for him. Uh, and just people all over the place. Former Top Cow editor uh, Joshua Kozin, who's now head of Stranger Comics, uh, who put out Niobe and many other great books. Uh, he was across from me at LACC this year. Mm -hmm. He sent me a job uh, where I ended up editing six full issues of a series called Pop Scars that uh -huh. published through Massive Publishing. Uh, it finished its run, and now the creator wants to collect it again as an OGN. And he's shopping it around. I did some work for him. Pat O'Malley, great mm -hmm. guy. If you hear about Pop Scars, please support. Um, very dark. Oh, uh, mature, mature uh, content warning on that one. Yes, yes. Um, we'll, we'll put the logo down at the bottom and say mature. Uh, but then um, 
through all of this, so that so now it's been ten years since I was at Top Cow. Uh, the folks over at Top Cow, things had changed. Mm -hmm. uh, they went back to having an in-house person. The in-house person had a new opportunity arise. A great guy named Vince Longo. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm dropping his name uh, because uh, he's a great freelance designer now. Freelance. So everyone out there who hears this, if you need some books done, Vince. There uh, it is. But but they said, hey, Phil, uh, are you still in the mix? I was like, hell, yes, I'm in the mix. I'm up <laughs> for a Ringo this year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they and so Mark called me. I didn't say that to Mark. Uh, so artist Mark Silvestri, head of Top Cow, they he called me. But ahead of that, over the years, the incredible editor they have over there, Elena Salcedo, she and I had maintained a a uh, social relationship over the years because uh, she was coming into Top Cow as I was coming out. Mm -hmm. And we had had a sort of a nice arrangement where I would say, hey, Elena, you know, I'd like to still go to San Diego. I'll pay for my room and in exchange, but can I get one in Top Cow's block? But in exchange, I'll host a bar for everybody. So nice, nice. people could treat my room as sort of a lounge and I'd bring cheese and crackers and six cases of alcohol. And we would just, for the last 10 years, we would just socialize in the Smith room. Uh, but, but now they, they approached me and said, Hey, Phil, are you available? I'm saying, yeah, I'm available and I'm up for an award and I'm still active. Uh, so since June, I've been handing off with Vince, sort of like learning what's new, what's the same, what's different. Hey, mm -hmm. do you remember where this file is? I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember making that file. I got it here <laughs> on this old hard drive. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's a little different, uh, more streamlined, uh, but uh, still as tenacious. And Mark is still a killer. Mm -hmm. He is coming off of his uh, Batman run at mm, DC, okay. Batman and the, the Batman, the Joker, the Deadly Duo, which I got to scan those pages. So even before they brought up the idea of me coming back to Top Cow, uh, Mark uh, asked if I would scan his pages. So I got to scan all seven issues of Batman before anyone else got to see them. And oh, nice. No matter what. Maybe an artist edition could do it justice, but I was scanning them as super high res as I could. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same as holding them in your hands because they're so intricate and so detailed mm -hmm. that, I mean, you could do a whole book of just full pages at 11 by 17 of just a panel and you're not getting the whole picture like holding it in your hand. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. anyway, so I've I've digressed. Uh, so basically, the background, the origin is I self-published, got an internship, got a job, lost a job, got the job back, and here I am. I, I love the uh, the way paths work out and the, just the steps and the people that are there to support and really be a kind face. Um, you mentioned you do lettering, coloring, graphic design, a variety of things. Uh, and you've written you've written on books like Witchblade and edited a variety of uh, books as well. Um, so curious about the sweet spot of creating for you. The thing about wanting to create something is you want to get something for me, something off your chest or articulate something that maybe is misunderstood, like like the disappointment appointment a child feels when a parent forgets their birthday mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a killer moment yes but it feels are you telling it from the parent's point of view or the child's point of view different story depending on which angle mm -hmm. and so for me in my stories when i wrote i so i wrote a witchblade one shot called witchblade due process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the concept was to take Sarah and have her show her in a vulnerable position where she doesn't have the moral high ground or the moral high ground is very gray. Uh -huh. Basically, the premise is, is someone innocent got sent to prison. While in prison, they made a deal with a demon 
but the whole catalyst of all this, the person was innocent when they went to prison, but they came out scarred. Mm -hmm. And the story is about Sarah who feels responsible for not being able to prevent this innocent person going to prison, her trying to redeem herself or have atonement mm -hmm. for that. It was about her finding atonement instead of coming into a situation, seeing right and wrong, and automatically doing the right thing. This was about something she felt guilty about uh -huh. and making atonement. But then also, every character in a book needs to have their own story. So the person who went to prison, they're at every stage, they're trying to do the right thing. So in order to survive prison, they have to make a deal with a demon. It's a comic book, man. Just go with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You know, so you make a deal with the demon. The The demon, of course, has ulterior motives. The deal is not what it appears to be on the surface. Mm -hmm. And then Sarah comes in at the end trying to make atonement and just figure out, sort through the broken pieces of this person's life and the lives they touch, including that person's children. Mm -hmm. And I left it on a little bit of a cliffhanger because now, at the end of the story, of that story, for example, uh, the person who went to prison uh, doesn't make it, but you're left wondering what will their child do? Because at the end of the story, the demon approaches his child and says, do you want to take revenge on Sarah? Or or make a deal with me or so, so basically it le it leaves on a choice. Yeah, I I always hope to follow it up one day, but we'll see. The the cycle continues. Love that. But when you ask what draws you to telling stories, it's bringing out these sort of these gray what might seem to me to be clear, mm -hmm. but maybe gray to others or gray to me and explore it. And just have that experience, to have that catharsis to be all fancy uh, fourth-year college English, you know, term. Absolutely. Uh, love it. Love it. <laughs> One of the first appearances of the word catharsis on the show. Love it. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um so I think I have one more official question, and then we can hit anything that we've missed. And that is places where people can go, as well as what happens or, or what has your um, creative attention at the moment. So online spaces or convention spaces, as well as any particular projects that you want to hat tip. Gosh. Oh, projects to hat tip. Uh, oh, it's confident. When, when will this air? Whenever you want it to. <laughs> okay. you tell me the day and the time and i will be glad to uh oh, drop it top, down top cow has something cooking that uh if i have the opportunity to plug it i would get in big trouble for not plugging this uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. so next thursday well, let me look at my calendar mm -hmm. all these dates are 10 well okay so on february 29th Le leap year this year mm -hmm. uh top cow is going to be launching the darkness the complete the darkness volume three collection mm -hmm. uh it's a kickstarter uh it's the third in the series of darkness uh kickstarters in this complete edition series so the first one had uh, approximately 25 issues of content the second one, uh, some more. And then the third one, some more. There's a lot of great rewards. It'll be live on the 29th for sure. I believe the preview link will go live possibly this Thursday or Friday. Great, I'm not great. the marketing person. I'm providing graphics and mock-ups. And I'm still working with Vince, who, because he's so experienced with the Kickstarters, he's helping with the graphics too. Mm -hmm. So he's not totally out of the mix. But, uh, but yeah, if uh, we're plugging uh, places to go... <laughs> If Absolutely. any of my coworkers see this <laughs> and you see, I, I had a chance to plug the darkness, but until that uh, pre sign up link goes live, uh, please don't post this. Otherwise I would be the one letting the cat out of the bag. And, oh yes. No, I won't do that. Trouble. <laughs> I won't do that. In fact, if you want to uh, confirm that day and just message it to me, then I'll make sure that it appears 
Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But it's going to be a, a great big Kickstarter. Um, what else? Uh, just to check out Top Cow. They're doing a lot of great stuff now. Well, there's going to be some announcements coming that I, I got to be super tight lipped. I can't even yeah, absolutely. spill of course, nothing on, of course. on that. But uh, some of the stuff they've put out in the last few years has been amazing. Recently, Antarctica, uh, a 10 issue limited series from Simon Burks, Willie Roberts, and Lyndon White. Amazing series. That's an example of a series that uh, came into Top Cow. Elena, the editor, was the uh, she was the one who rallied everyone behind it and really promoted it and got them going, and it has done very well. Uh, and uh, the art's great, and out of it we've met you know, an amazing writer, Simon, an amazing yeah. artist, Willie, and the letterer, Lyndon White. This guy's not a letterer. This guy's a cover artist. He's a cover artist pretending to be a letterer because <laughs> we asked him to do some covers and they're amazing. Awesome. So anyway, so if I'm plugging, that's what I'm plugging. And of course, former Top Cow editor, Ryan Katie, he put out a book called Haunt You to the End that I had the pleasure of working on. Mm -hmm. Am amazing, tight, story with art by the amazing Andrea Moody. Um, and Top Cow's getting ready for San Diego. That's kind of the tight lip stuff I have to be tight lipped about because we got some big stuff coming. So awesome. Always glad to hear there's stuff on the way. Yeah. 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 Um web space wise, those points of connection. Oh I'm so buried in work. I <laughs> rarely get to poke my head out. Yeah. Online, I just try to keep up with. I watch Nerd of the Rings on YouTube. Yeah. It's a YouTube channel where this uh, content creator just goes into deep dives on Lord of the Rings. If you want to relax and watch someone talk about something they love, watch a, some Nerd of the Rings because <laughs> I find great. it so enjoyable and relaxing. When he goes deep on a Luvatar and Mandos and all of these things and why they're called the Gleaming Caves, what <laughs> what happened to Gimli and Legolas after the after the Fellowship? These are all great questions, and he has answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to understand the Silmarillion, here it is. <laughs> Correct. And then all of the crazy books that came afterwards, the the Christopher Tolkien like uh -huh, collections uh -huh. based on notes, the treason of Isengard and so on. Like I reread the children of Hurin. I've reread it like two or three times. I've reread the Silmarillion like two or three times. I had a second read of the Lord of the Rings recently. Uh, and some of these other books I'm into, uh, I'm going to start diving into these other histories. Uh, but that's a lot. I'm I'm currently reading a book by Margaret Atwood, the creator of The Handmaid's Tale, mm -hmm. called Oryx and Crake. That's a cool one. Yeah, that's very it's cool. It's a future dystopian novel. I'm about three quarters of the way through. Very dark. <laughs> very dark and mythological. Like There's yeah. something. I'm not at the end yet, so I haven't put it all together. But uh, it's a good book. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to be my book after that oh i read the three body problem with mm. my daughter nice nice. Uh, and we're very much looking forward to the netflix adaptation of that and uh my daughter's 14 uh i get to show her one episode of star trek a week like we had to cut it down because i was like hey why don't we just watch it every night we could do it whatever <laughs> so i did the math well i think we'll be able to finish deep space nine before she turns 18 and I want to slide in at least Picard season three, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some some key issues, episodes of Discovery. We do watch Strange New Worlds. That's a good one. Yeah. When it comes out, it's solid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Picard season three, some Discovery. Uh, once in a while, a lower decks, because sometimes the humor is a little, uh, I'm going to say it, it's a little raunchy sometimes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but it's fun. Uh, yeah. so, but as far as like online communities and message boards, I'm not very active in that space. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, it sounds like you're, 
creatively engaged in so many things and kind of refilling your buckets in that way. Um, and I just saw, I think it was today uh, or sometime recently that Strange New World season three is currently underway. Production has begun. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to where they take it. I'm looking forward to see how far they take his hair up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We'll all have our pompadours quaffed and prepared. Um, but Phil, thank you so much for the time and thank you for the work. I'm looking forward to the uh, projects to come, including the ones that we couldn't mention. And glad to have you back anytime as you're plugging away and also plugging away. Thank you, Jason. Live long and prosper. Likewise. Absolutely.